Hello, my name is Torin and welcome to the IBOA. Uh, last week we talked about the NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement, the goals and the reservation, trade barrier and investment politics between the countries of Canada, the United States and Mexico. This time, we'll especially learn about the tariff system of the United States, that is the US custom law and the entry process. About the import declaration process called the entry process, we will discuss three issues. The requirement, the right to make an entry, record keeping, and requirements. Um, we will start with the requirements. The entry process generally involves two steps. The entry document that enables the custom official to determine whether the goods may be released from custody. Second, entry summary that provides custom with information necessary for duty, assessment, and um, statistical purpose. Uh, can you tell me the detail of the entry document or the entry summary? John, would you like to start? So the entry documents are to be filed with the district or port director at the port of entry within five working days after the goods reaches the U.S. Um, I would like to add that the documents required for customs generally um, would include five things such as the entry manifest or other forms of merchandise released required by customs. Two is the bill, a bill of lading, um, career certificate or other evidence of the right to make the entry. And three, a commercial invoice. Four, packing list detailing the specific contents of the package container. And uh, last not least, any other documents necessary to determine the, if the goods are admissible. Uh, how about the entry of summary, Ms. Guan? Within 10 days of uh, release of the goods, the importer must file an entry summary, copy of invoice, a packing list, and document of title are attached to the entry summaries. This information helps custom assess the value of imported goods. When the importer submits the entry summaries, it pay the estimated duties. And can you tell me more about the commercial invoice? Well, the commercial invoice must be signed by the seller or shipper and include information uh, talking about the kind, quantity, and price and values of goods. Sometimes the commercial invoice is not available at the time the goods are presented for entry. If this occurs, a pro forma invoice may be filed. The importer must also post a bond guaranteeing that commercial invoice will be produced within 120 days of date of entry. What about mail entries, John? Okay, so for mail, for mail entries, um, it often Ventures, uh, for importers to transport goods into the U.S. through mail. Um, this simplifies the entry process because of the duties on parcels valued at 1,050 or less. About right to make an entry. Uh, custom and regulation allow custom service, such as custom brokers. These are the person who authorize to act as an agent in the entry of process. These private individual or firms must be licensed by the custom service. The relation between the importer and its broker is governed by the law of agency. The importer ultimately is liable for most of the broker's action in entering the goods. Power of attorney. Custom brokers must be granted power of attorney from the owner, purchaser, or company. Custom provides a specific forms for extending the authorities, although the parties draw up their own agreements. How about recording uh, and keeping requirements? Ruby, can you start um, us with yes. customs? Yes, so the customs authority would have to inspect the records and all of these documents filed um, with an entry should be all retained, um, such as purchase orders, proof of payment documents, uh, bookkeeping materials, resale contracts, and other documents too. Yeah, that is true. Custom authorities can inspect records in uh, multiple conditions. First, it can inspect with the consent of the importer after a given reasonable notice. Second is that it can issue an administrative summons enforceable by court order. And lastly, it can seize the information after obtaining a search warrant from a court. About transaction for non 
companies.、Um, a failure to comply with a summons ordering access to records demanded by the custom subjects. The non-complying company to contempt、uh, transaction. These includes the normal penalties of、um, monetary fines and jail sentences.、Uh, Miss Wang, can you talk more about the court? The court also may impose two additional sanctions on an importer that failed to make its record available. First, the importer may be prevented from importing any more goods into the U.S. Second, customs may withhold the delivery of the import good. Thank you, you all, for the discussion、uh, about custom and law and the principles of the custom declaration process. To clarify the issue, we will study the case together. It is the United States versus the 1.5 million letter of credits.、Uh, facts. Synergy is a Hong Kong corporation that imports into the United States,、uh, and letters goods produced in the People's Republic of China. Synergy hired Andrew Oden as a vice president of the finance and administration and controller at its New York office. Oden's responsibilities provide him with the access to Synergy's financial books and records. It involves Uh, and its imported records. After reading Synergy's financial record and import document, Arden concludes Synergy was a valuing goods it is imported into the United States lower than their correct、uh, dutable value by using false invoice, which uh, fraudly uh, undervalued the goods being imported. Uh, without informing Synergy, Arling provides the custom service with numerous document that detailed his、uh, discovery. In addition, Odin had a special agent of、uh, the custom service hired as a junior account at Synergy, and for six months the two engaged in an undercover investigation of the company. As a result. Uh, of the information acquired in this investigation, the government obtained several research warrants and seized the document bank account and the merchandise from Synergy's New York office. Synergy then posted a 1.5 million letter of credits as a substitute for the 4.3 million seized from its bank account. Synergy, uh, uh, pretend. The court to dismiss the government case on the ground that covers activities conducted by Odling, and the custom service agent、uh, constituted an illegal search. So the issue here is: was the custom service undercover the investigation illegal? Ruby. Um, well, actually, I remember that under the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution about search and arrest warrants, it states that. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, house, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall be issued. However, upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched,、um, people or things are to be seized. Yeah, I agree with Ruby.、Um, in this case,、uh, Andrew Odin is not wrong to cooperate with customs to hold the company's documents. I think Odin detects synergy where valuing goods is imported into the United States lower than their correct dutiable value by using fail invoice, which fraudulently undervalues the goods being imported. If he did not report to the custom, would be accused of an uncompliance. Ah, what do you think? Well, moreover, Synergy produced no evidence indicating、uh, the undercover agents conducted a search that was unlawfully broad in scope, unbounded in time, or included areas over which neither Olding nor the agents had authority to. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you for the discussion of the case. Uh, the question here is: Was the custom service undercover the investigation illegal?、Uh, I think no. No 
as the undercover operation in and of themselves do not violate the privacy rights of the corporation. There is no violation of the Fourth uh, Amendment when someone cooperating with the government permits a search of privacy to which that person has access to either common authorities or the permission uh, to exercise that access. Uh, the board range of responsibility is given to Otling by Synergy's management. It demonstrates that he possesses the required uh, authorities over the document and the office to permit their being searched. Do you have any question for the case? Thank you all so much for the discussion and thank you to IBLA Institutes and especially thanks to Dr. Sun.